Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the United Arab Emirates. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the national anthem of the United Arab Emirates. We tend to view the world in black and white, polarized and defined by conflicting perspectives, priorities, or points of view, and more than often perceive them as unreconcilable and antagonistic. But when economic and climate progress are working in tandem, they can be the strongest of allies. It's time to step back and reframe our energy conversation, not as a debate to be won or lost, but as an equation to be balanced. We don't have to choose between our planet and our prosperity. Our efforts should focus on a new, bold, and realistic pathway that benefits both the climate and the economy. We must hold back emissions, not progress. Here in the UAE, we have always viewed climate action as an opportunity to develop practical solutions to a global problem affecting us all. The world is not black and white. It's time to shift perspective, to view it in a new light. And from this new vantage point, let's draw strength from unity, find focus, clarity, transform ambition into action, and transition to a new reality. A reality where our energy is secure, affordable, and sustainable. Welcome to Adipec. أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام نقدم لكم جون ديفتيريوس مقدم حفل الافتتاح للنسخة الثامنة والثلاثين من مؤتمر Your Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Naikan, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Presidential Affairs, it's good to see you, although it's a slightly dark out there. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it is a pleasure to be back in Abu Dhabi and at Adipec 2022, hosted, of course, by the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, ADNOC. This is the most inclusive and global forum yet, with attendees from more than 160 countries. And I was told before we started today that over 30 ministers are attending the ceremony and over 2,500 guests, and that is a record. Uh, this is a clear testament to your commitment to the industry, but also to the relevance and the importance of ADAPEC itself. 
ahead of COP27 in Egypt and COP28 here in the UAE. ADAPEC 2022 is an opportunity for the entire global energy industry to participate in reframing the energy transition debate to ensure it is realistic, inclusive, and equitable. And with this in mind, I would like to invite to the stage His Excellency Dr. Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber, of course, the UAE Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology, Managing Director, and Group Chief Executive Officer of ADNOC, to deliver his welcoming address. Dr. Sultan. Assalamu alaikum. Your Highness, Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Deputy Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and Minister of Presiden Presidential Court. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies, and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to welcome you to the United Arab Emirates, to Abu Dhabi, and Adapec. Our industry has convened here for almost 40 years, during which we have seen many challenges and many opportunities. And today, our discussions are happening at an absolutely pivotal moment. The solutions we agree on and the commitments we will make help shape the future of our world. Because today, more than ever, energy is everybody's top priority. And we all know why. Right now, at this very moment, the global energy landscape is going through a perfect storm. Here are the hard facts. Global supply chains continue to be fragile. Geopolitics are now more complex, fragmented, and polarized than ever. Inflation is rising, and interest rates are pushing up the cost of borrowing and investing. It is no wonder, then, that the global economy is on a knife's edge. People ask, will there be a recession? And I ask, who among us can confidently predict the future? This is the backdrop we are meeting against here at ADEPEC. So when I started to think about what I should be saying here today, I thought long and hard. Should I dwell on the challenges we are facing? Or should I use this platform to focus on the opportunities? And a few days ago, as I was briefing and updating our president, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, I asked his advice. His response was reassuring. He told me, we cannot ignore the, rea the realities on the ground. We need to face them. We don't shy away from challenges. We address them by adopting a positive mindset and by working out solutions with like-minded partners. And then he added, and remember, pursuing progress is in our DNA. So today, I stand before you with a message of realism and also of optimism. Now is not the time to point out that the long-term underinvestment in oil and gas has made a difficult situation even worse. We know that already. The data is very clear. If we zero out hydrocarbon investment due to natural decline, we would lose 5 million barrels per day of oil each year from the current supplies. This would make the shocks we have experienced this year feel like a minor tremor. If this year has taught us anything, it taught us that energy security is the foundation of all progress, economic, social, and climate progress. And there is no better place in the world to drive that progress than right here in Abu Dhabi at Adepec, where the best minds are gathering from all over the world. And let me just add this. The solutions the world needs 
are also major opportunities for all of us. And let me explain why. Our world is on its way to being home to 9.7 billion people by 2050. And to meet their needs, the world will have to produce 30% more energy than today. And as we meet that need, we will be helping to bring electricity to almost 800 million people who don't have it today. We will also be helping to transform the lives of 2.6 billion people who have no access to clean cooking and heating fuels. The world needs all the solutions it can get. It is not oil or gas or solar or wind or nuclear or hydrogen. It is oil and gas and solar and wind and nuclear and hydrogen. It is all of the above. It is all of the above, plus the clean energies yet to be discovered, commercialized, tested, and deployed. The world needs maximum energy, minimum emissions. This is why our leadership decided to be a first mover in renewable energy over 16 years ago by launching Mazdar. It is why we were the first country in the region to deploy nuclear power. And it is why ADNOC is making today's energy cleaner while investing in clean energies of tomorrow. At ADNOC, we have connected all our operations to zero carbon nuclear and solar power. We are electrifying our offshore operations to cut their carbon footprint in half. And we are pressing down harder and harder on our methane intensity, even though we already have one of the lowest levels in the world, maximum energy, minimum emissions. Moving forward, technology will be one of the greatest enablers for our industry. And this is an area where we can amplify and accelerate our impact. As an example, take carbon capture and storage. It is one technology we can take to scale, not just in our industry, but in fact in all industries. And there is hydrogen. Just a few days ago, I saw the first shipment of ammonia arrive from the UAE to Hamburg, Germany. It did feel like a historic moment. It was a first step in creating a hydrogen value chain and an important step in taking yet another industry and opportunity. And I'll say it again, maximum energy, minimum emissions. Ladies and gentlemen, with COP27 meeting in Sharm el-Sheikh next week, and as the UAE prepares to host COP28, the Emirates Climate Conference, our efforts should focus on new, bold, realistic, and pragmatic pathway that benefits humanity, the climate, and for sure, the economy. We need to hold back emissions, not progress. The world is looking for solutions, and I believe the energy industry can unite in a divided world to find them. <clears throat> Colleagues, I believe that the future is forged by those who make the first move. So today, I extend an open invitation to all our partners and friends. Let's make that move together and forge that future. All we have to do is take the opportunities ahead of us. Energy security, accessibility, and sustainability is what the world wants. Maximum energy, minimum emissions is what the world needs. It is what we can give them. It is the reason we will together succeed. Thank you, and please enjoy the rest of the week.
Thank you, Dr. Sultan. I always like it when we start off at APEC and you get a chance to uh, set the framework for debate. And in fact, last year it was a call to action. And I think I have your words correct when you said we're sleepwalking through into disaster with the lack of investment into the oil and gas sector. And it became so true at the start of 2022. In fact, I checked the figures uh, before ADAPEC 2022, and it's only the Middle East national oil companies who are keeping pace above 2019 in the reinvestment of oil and gas. Others are actually sliding behind. So it is uh, certainly a wake-up call this year and going into 2023, despite the economic pressures. Uh, it is excellent to discuss the energy transition. I think it's an honor uh, after seeing him uh, in Aberdeen at the World Energy Council. We had a half hour discussion on the energy trilemma that Dr. Sultan talked about uh, at FII last week when you talked about the development of the kingdom and revenues that are needed. Uh, let's give a warm Adepec welcome to His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz uh, bin Salman Al Saud to Adepec 2022. Thanks very much. Highness, Highnesses, distinguished guests, friends, and colleagues from the industry. I permit me to say I come here without a speech because I want to prove that uh, Sultan and I, although we are distant uh, far from each other, and I haven't had the privilege of seeing his speech, but I know that the two countries, that is, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the UAE, are twinning. When Sultan talked about the future, I kept repeating, so we are, and so we are. And it's so easy to, to demonstrate that. And let me give you a preview. Although, as an elderly fellow, I had the cards in my pocket, but it seemed to be that uh, the elderly still can dream and have the ambition of the young, for which I remember them. And because of that, I remember them. And let me give you a checklist. We and the UAE are increasing our production capacity. We and the UAE are increasing our refining and liquid to chemicals. We and the UAE are approaching hydrogen with the velocity that uh, is required, both blue and green. In fact, we are working in defining or standardizing hydrogen as being clean hydrogen without the tag of gray or blue or green or even pink. We and the UAE are reaching out to the energy mix that of tomorrow and the future because we cannot afford but to put together a modern energy system that can give us the calling of this conference, which is secure, sustainable, and affordable energy system. We and the UAE are working diligently hard to prove the carbon sequesterization is one solution out of many that we and the industry should work hard and laboriously to achieve in mitigating. We and the UAE, talking about climate change, we are working hard to fulfill our commitments of net zero by a certain time. We and the UAE are members of the Net Zero Forum and the Methane Initiative 
and mission innovation and every other form and the carbon sequesterization forum and every other form that can put us at bar if not leading in bringing these solutions. We and the UAE have an ambitious, young, ambitious, determined population that cannot and would not stand us sitting doing nothing in preparing for their better future to come. And because of that, we and the UAE are going to be the exemplary producer, hydrocarbon producer, but also achieve all the sustainability goals. And because of that, and indeed, we have just recently closed our FII in Riyadh, and now we are here. But look at the many events that we've been hosting, both in the Kingdom and the UAE. And ask yourself why and what is the cause for us attending to these activities, putting it together in our countries, because we're proud to show everybody that we are there, we're proactive, and we are going to be attentive. Nothing of the callings of the today would prevent us from focusing and concentrating on the future. Because if we lose the focus in the future, we will repeat what is going on today. And because of that, and I would urge everybody to learn from the today's affairs, that in order to attend to the present, we must not let go the future. I am honored, Your Highness, to be here with you. There is so much that we could prove together in our twinning, if I call it, aspiration, that we will continue, and again, knowing the determination of our people, your people, that we should continue to be the exemplary two countries for an energy producers, because we are no longer are called oil producers. We are an energy producer. And because of that, we need these events to reoccur. And we need the knowledge sharing to happen. And we need to bring uh, serious people to become with us, involved with us, in bringing these solutions. Breaking, uh, breaking the uh, the, the so-called energy uh, constraints will take a lot of brains, a lot of investments, a lot of technologies that will have to evolve, without which we cannot approach the future with the right recipes that are, we are committed to deliver. With that, we need to work also with our friends in Egypt to make their COP27 a successful one, because we need to build from that success to another success, hopefully next year in Abu Dhabi, when Abu Dhabi hosts the COP28. We don't owe it to anybody but us. Our countries also have similarities. It was done for us, by us, for our future. And we need to commit ourselves to that, too. Thank you. But that has a ry uh, rhythm to it, uh, Your Royal Highness. We in the UAE, I'll probably remember that, going into uh, Adepec 2023. Thanks again for making the trip here uh, and your brief but very direct comments about the energy transition. What a year it's been since we were here uh, last year. We started the year with very strong demand for oil and gas, of course. Uh, the taps were closed, uh, not completely, but uh, with supplies going into Europe, 
uh, it's triggered inflation and then this need to reinvest into the sector and not lose sight of the medium-term goal now becoming a near-term goal, and that is the energy transition, as we say here, for secure and affordable and sustainable energy. That's the theme of our panel today. Uh, let's give a warm welcome to our panelists. First, the Minister of Energy from the UAE, uh, Suhail Faraj al Mazrui. Please, come on up. His Excellency uh, Sri Hardip Singh Puri, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, also Housing and Urban Affairs. Welcome back to Adepec. His Excellency Tarek El Mola, the Minister of Petroleum and also Mineral Resources from the great country of Egypt. Good to see you back at Adepec 2022. And Amos Hochstein, the Special Presidential Coordinator, he's changed titles recently because of the role he's playing around the world. Uh, welcome uh, of the United States. Amos, come on up to the stage. And he's going to frame our debate here at Adepec with a brief introduction on some of the key issues we see in the energy market. A warm welcome to him as well. Thanks. Go ahead, try again. Your Highness, Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Your Royal Highness, Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman Al Saud, and of course, Your Excellency, Dr. Sultan Al Jaber, most importantly, my friend and great leader of the energy system in, in so many places around the world. It's a pleasure to be here today representing the United States government and President Biden. The relationship between the United States and the United Arab Emirates is strong, long-standing, broad, and enduring. We have fought, bled, and mourned together as we have triumphed, made peace, and innovated together. And now, we must join forces to lead an energy transition. The world is facing extraordinary challenges from war and a devastating war in Europe to a pandemic that has altered the way of our lives, to economic uncertainty. And through all of this, the one constant is a worsening climate crisis. We at this gathering, governments and companies, must all do our part. And we must focus on doing two things at the same time, as has been the theme of the previous speakers. The first, ensure we have a sufficient energy supply to maintain global economic growth including investment in carbon-efficient production and refining. And the second, at the same time, accelerating the transition to a cleaner, healthier, and more diversified and decarbonized energy system. The United States is investing in both. We have taken steps this past year to ensure economic growth continues throughout the world through oil and LNG supply. And we have made the largest ever investment in climate, in advanced clean technology, in electric vehicles adaptation, and in the supply chains for all of the above. But the extraordinary investment by the United States and the extraordinary investments we've just heard from the United Arab Emirates and others is just not enough. This is a global crisis, and therefore it requires global solutions. So regardless of where you are on the energy spectrum, we must all invest and innovate towards achieving a more decarbonized, net zero world. I'm grateful to the United Arab Emirates for once again convening us all here, as Prince Abdulaziz just said, so that we can have the greatest minds in the world, in the global energy system, in the integrated and interconnected energy system, to come up and discuss solutions for how do we live through this world where we have our short-term goals, our medium-term goals, living in harmony, investing in the energy system that we require and need in order to have that economic growth while still growing and in our investments in the energy transition where the goals that we have set 
are clearly now too far away. We need to make them sooner and more urgent than ever before. Thank you again for hosting, and I look forward to the panel discussion and for this week. Thank you. Did you say it was short enough? Direct and to the point. That's what we like, uh, particularly with Dr. Sultan's clock today. Uh, I'm just going to remind our panel we have 15 minutes uh, for our discussion, which allows it for a really highly focused uh, to do two rounds very quickly. Uh, I'm going to start with His Excellency, uh, Minister Mazrui. Um, in retrospect now, looking at both the OPEC numbers that have come out uh, since the October decision, and looking at, say, even uh, results from Amazon or from Meta, the former Facebook, uh, was it a wise decision, a calibration? And the second layer of that, is OPEC and OPEC Plus ready to move if necessary, if we have a surprise uptick in demand? Do you want to tackle that and we'll move forward? Well, uh, thank you, John, and it's great uh, to be here in this, in this uh, international event. And we're talking about energy. So I think, I think it's beyond just talking about oil or crude oil. The challenge that the world is facing, as it was clear in His Excellency Dr. Sultan, is more than just oil. We need to look at the gas. We need to look at the whole spectrum of energy. And more than anything else, we need to focus on ensuring that we have enough efforts in renewable energy, in hydrogen and others. And I can assure you that we in the United Arab Emirates, as well as our fellow uh, uh, colleagues in, in OPEC Plus, are keen on supplying the world uh, with the requirement it, 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 it needs. Uh, but at the same time, we're not on the only producers in the world. We are producing less than 50% of what is produced, and there are others who need to do also their part in investing and encouraging investments as we need it more than ever to complement the role of renewable energy that the world is facing. But for us here in the UAE, I can assure you that we are doing everything we can to supply the world, but at the same time, we are focused on doing it as and, so oil and the others, and we need everything. And we have a very clear strategy, thanks to our leadership. We are focused on diversifying the energy sources, and we are focused on reducing our emission. And as His Highness always tells us, uh, Sheikh Mansour, he is always keen on us being at maximum efficiency in everything that we are doing, reducing the emission, as well as reducing the consumption. Because reducing the consumption is as important as reducing the emission. Okay, very good. Uh, very quickly, within 15 seconds, you mentioned to me, you're only a phone call or a Zoom call away if the demand rose. I mean, OPEC Plus remains flexible. It's not an agreement locked in stone, Your Excellency? Well, that is always the case. We have a mechanism to get together if the requirements are there. But this technical organization is always going to stay as a trusted technical organization taking a decision and doing its best to balance the supply and demand. So that, that is our commitment. And if there is a requirement, like we have done it so many times in the past, we are only a phone call away if the requirements are there. And we said this uh, so many times before. Thank you for the clarity. Uh, Minister Puri, I saw you at Gas Tech in September in Milano this year, and you were saying then that there was a squeeze on the Indian consumer, and you were looking for a variety of sources uh, for both oil and gas, and you have this target to try to get to 50% of renewable capacity by 2030, which I see is a bit more flexible. It's not locked in stone right now. Do you think, A, to Minister Mazrui's point, you're getting access to the energy you're looking for, for the consumer, it's not too much pressure on the economy, and B, do you need that flexibility to 2030 because of the energy security supply shock that we had in 2022? I would put it a little differently. There is pressure on the economy because the scale at which we are working 
to supply the energy needs of uh, 1.34 billion people and uh, energy availability. We have not had any situation where, uh, you know, petrol, diesel or gas has not been available, but it has a cost to it. And I think all policy decisions um, have consequences, direct and uh, intended and unintended. One of the unintended uh, uh, consequences, perhaps uh, it's a good consequence, is that when uh, prices rose, on the one hand there's inflation movement towards a global recessionary condition, but in India it has also galvanized the movement in the other direction. There's billions of dollars coming in to look at, for instance, the ecosystem for electric vehicles. We've done the transition on biofuels from 1.4 percent, we've reached 10 percent blending. We are going to 20 percent blending in the next two years, bringing the target of 2030 down. We're going in a big way on compressed biogas. Plus, more than that, we've opened up uh, a million square kilometers. We have a total of 3.5 million square kilometers of sedimentary basin. One million square kilometers of uh, that sedimentary basin, which was no-go area, we've opened it out to international investment. So all the major uh, oil entities, some of them have very advanced uh, arrangements with us, with our companies, others are coming in. Because in order to make that transition, whatever your transition date is, you have to survive the present. And the survival of the present cannot be on terms of entire economies. There are countries around the world where you, for the love of money you cannot access energy. Now, I'm not going into the causation as to why it happened. Underinvestment, whatever happened subsequently. But I think the transition itself would be severely undermined if the current ability, especially large consuming countries, is not cushioned in order to make that transition. In India, we feel very confident of being able to make it. We feel confident because we have both domestic thing. I saw uh, uh, Minister Sultan talk about uh, green ammonia supply from here to Hamburg. We have our companies supplying there as well. Mm. Uh, one of our companies signed an agreement with the Singapore authorities to supply green ammonia to run their new generation G plants. All that we will do. But I still make the point that the immediate, because I was very encouraged uh, by the saying that this is realism and optimism. Our um, host, uh, Sultan, uh, Minister Sultan said that. And I think it's always a good start to a morning if you are able to also focus on the realism part of it uh, and say it how it is. So I think high energy prices have, without any doubt, and I don't think there's a counter narrative, we won't go into the reason. They have a consequence which we need to factor in. But I think one of the unintended causes is that many of us are now going to diversify, we are going to uh, uh, look at alternate uh, areas, alternate energy sources, etc., faster than we had originally envisaged. Thank you very much for being direct on that in the uh, conundrum that you're, uh, that you're in right now. Uh, Tarek Amola, uh, Your Excellency, there's this um, real challenge, and everybody knows you had your 25 years of commercial experience before taking the ministry, uh, both the need for rapid decarbonization but also dealing with energy security, and there's been a game changer what's happened in the Eastern Med with, with Egypt. Is the industry capable of doing both, both missions at a rapid pace, do you think? And let's watch our time. Thank you. Thank you, John. I, I have to start by uh, addressing uh, Zionist Sheikh Mansour for the hospitality and uh, my dear uh, colleagues and friends, Excellencies, Dr. Sultan and uh, Engineer Sohel, His Excellency, for the invitation. I'm really uh, happy to be among this uh, distinguished panelist and to attend again this uh, important uh, event at IBEC. Well, it is an important uh, uh, question, and uh, I want to tell you that Dr. Sultan has said it all, and uh, His Royal Highness. Prince Abdulaziz has also confirmed it. So what we are doing currently in Egypt is no different than other places. Uh, we are working all together in parallel. Definitely, uh, we have to start by saying we've been blessed that we have some gas where we were able, with this uh, additional gas, to secure some exports and to connect with our neighboring countries and to form what is called the East Mediterranean Gas Forum in order to cooperate together in this resource. Meanwhile, in parallel, as we said, so we are blessed, we have sun, we have wind, and we are working very hard to have also this developed in parallel. 
So we have an ambitious plan to reach before the year 2030 uh, of an about 40% of our uh, electricity developed by renewables. And one of these are uh, like uh, agreements and arrangements with Mazdar uh, to have a 10 giga uh, in the coming uh, few years. So uh, what we are doing in parallel is uh, diligently to work hard, but meanwhile to decarbonize our uh, uh, hydrocarbon projects and also and part of the important uh, actions that we are taking with our partners and these are actually our partners, uh, the international energy companies with their uh, technologies and their approach, we are able to demonstrate that we can develop our resources with less emissions and this is what we said, we need more energy with less emissions and I think that since we've mentioned the uh, Sharm el-Sheikh uh, COP27 next week, inshallah, so we have been able to demonstrate and to be able to have a dedicated thematic day, which is the decarbonization day. And this is the 11th of November for the first time ever at any of the COPs. And this is because we said from the beginning we want this COP to be an implementation COP. And we'll take it from there to demonstrate among the, the globe with our uh, energy uh, companies and partners that we can develop our resources with less emissions for a longer term. And uh, this will be like the beginning of a thread for our brothers in the UAE to host their COP next year as well in uh, uh, COP28, inshallah. Great. So Egypt representing uh, Africa, of course, and uh, the UAE. Sure representing West Asia and COP28. Uh, Amos Hochstein, I, in my coverage for CNN, I remember after the 2010 wild swings of going to 147 and then down to 30, I was asking the question, what is the Goldilocks price for oil? Not too hot, not too cold, but that encourages investment, uh, which is not a strain on the consumer. Would we say we're there now at around 87 for USWTI, 95-ish for Brent? And what does it mean for U.S. investment? One of the things uh, Suhail Masri said is that the underinvestment in that oil and gas sector uh, has been quite shocking because we had nearly 500 companies go bankrupt since 2016 uh, going into shale. What is the balance, would you suggest? And is the U.S. willing to invest more in oil and gas while it pursues the transition itself? Well, John, I think I will shock no one by not answering you about what the right price of oil is in the, in the world. Look, I think at the end of the day, we are facing an economic uncertainty globally because of the variety of conditions that Dr. Sultan mentioned before. This perfect storm that exists from geopolitical events to coming out of a pandemic to global growth and while having strong economic growth in the United States while at the same time talking about whether or not we're, uh, we're having these uh, potential recession challenges. And Energy is such a critical piece. The price of energy is a critical piece for global economic growth because so much of what we do is dependent on that. Our food prices are food. We are a farm to truck or to ship to truck to table. So everything that happens that we do and consume is dependent on energy price. So energy prices have to be priced in a way that allow for economic growth. And if they are not, then it will accelerate. They will rise too high and accelerate an economic downturn, which ultimately is the one thing that will be terrible for energy demand itself and price. We need to do, we have to continue to invest. We have called on our companies in the United States, and we hope that this happens around the world, to increase investment in production, investment in refining capacity, and we need to do that at the same time that we are calling on increased investment on the energy transition. They're not contradictory. They're just two different timelines. It may be that our climate goals are, we're talking about 2050 and 2035, but to get to those goals, you have to invest yesterday. And to get to those goals, we still have to have the reality of the economy that we have today, and that we need more investment right now, and yesterday, and tomorrow, in uh, the oil and gas sector as well. Okay, I could go for another 20 minutes, but we don't have them today. 
I wanted to talk to you about your update uh, on the uh, targets for 2050 of the UAE. We'll have to save it for the other discussions that are taking place uh, here at Adipak. His Excellency Suhail Mazrui, uh, the Minister uh, Puri from uh, India again. Uh, great to see you and thanks for the direct answers. Uh, His Excellency Tarek al Mola, is always a pleasure. And Amos, it's uh, terrific that you decided to put Adipak 2022 on the horizon here and uh, share your thoughts on the, the transition in the United States. President Biden had a substantial infrastructure bill which has a lot of money uh, built into emissions reductions and infrastructure uh, renewal in the United States. Can we give them a warm round of applause? Thank you very much. And just to close out our opening ceremony, Dr. Sultan, excellent speech as always. Uh, Sheikh Mansour, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you very much. Sheikh Khalid, uh, great to see you in person. Uh, Sheikh Nayan, it would be remiss if I didn't say thanks. It's great to see you as always. His Royal Highness, thanks for putting Adipak 2022 on your agenda, giving a very direct We in the UAE uh, speech today. Some highlights that are coming. Uh, Hadley Gamble's got a Chief Executive Officer roundtable you want to see at 2 o'clock. Uh, we're going to do the World Oil Outlook with OPEC at 4.30 in this hall as well. Uh, and we have a ministerial taking place at 1 o'clock. Uh, nice round of applause. Thank you very much for your attention this morning.